David Kroll from uh, Mortgage Network, and this is Money Matters. Uh, in the first segment, we were talking about the, uh, the outline of tax reform that was uh, passed down from the uh, Trump White House this week and uh, uh, what that outline looked like and what its impact is likely to be. I finished the segment by saying that it's unlikely that that broad sweeping tax reform uh, is going to actually happen um, ever and certainly not anytime soon. Uh, there is worry amongst Republicans that, that uh, putting uh, such a massive uh, tax plan on the table uh, would, uh, that was so clearly not possible to get passed uh, would be uh, a detriment to a less ambitious tax reform package uh, that might come along uh, in the future. In other words, the, the technique of starting with a very uh, extreme position and then negotiating back is not necessarily always the best technique. Uh, if, the, if the general public is completely turned off by the massive tax cut package, uh, then the stomach for further, more reasonable tax reform uh, is arguably much less. Why would the public be turned off? Well, the, uh, by the Wall Street Journal estimates, approximately 70 cents of every dollar of the trillions and trillions of dollars of, uh, of, of revenue that would be cut, of, of taxes that would not have to be paid, uh, roughly 70 cents of every dollar would go to the wealthiest 1% uh, of the population. Uh, this is hardly a surprise. Uh, the wealthiest 1% of the population uh, control an enormous portion of, of the nation's uh, gross domestic product uh, as it is, and uh, so it follows that any across-the-board tax cut will impact them the greatest. It is, however, heavily leveraged in the direction, this tax package is heavily directed, uh, directed in, in, in the direction of uh, 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 f less taxes for the most wealthy. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I watched this week as new clients came to Mortgage Network and uh, presented their financials uh, for loans. And one of the one of the back of my head calculations that I was making uh, was uh, what would the new uh, what would the new tax uh, guidelines and the and the new tax reform tax code mean for this client for the next client for the next client for the next client. The um, <clears throat> I had one client uh, that makes four hundred and seventy one thousand uh, dollars a year. Uh, and it's, it's very straightforward, $471,000, not through any uh, partnerships or through any real estate LLCs. Uh, it's just a straight W-2 um, uh, salaried job, salary plus bonus, $471,000. And uh, that, that fellow, uh, that household, excuse me, that household uh, would pay uh, approximately $75,000 uh, less tax. It's a very, very significant amount of uh, lower tax. Uh, the, uh, I had another fellow um, who, with uh, a sub chapter S corporation and a couple of LLCs and some dividend and interest income, a, a very sort of mixed income profile, uh, makes close to a million dollars a year. Uh, tax saving uh, for that chap would be uh, $200,000. Uh, very, very, very large impact on their lives. Uh, I had a number of uh, folks through uh, who were in the total household income, $40,000 to $70,000. Uh, those are typically uh, first-time home buyers. Uh, as little as seventy, as little, little as forty thousand dollars of gross household income, up to about seventy thousand gross household income. Uh, it looked to me 
I'm not a CPA, but I'm obviously good with numbers. That's what I do all day, every day. Uh, it looked to me as if the impact of the new plan uh, would be modest. Uh, it, it was not clear to me that their taxes would go up. It was also not clear to me that their taxes would go down. It looked to me as if their taxes would be roughly the same. Uh, the, uh, uh, the very interesting thing here is that the, um, the continued concentration of wealth in the country, the, the leveraging of the wealth of the country uh, into the hands of, of, of really a smaller and smaller percentage of the population. Is, uh, is, is interesting, uh, is the best thing you can say about it. Troubling uh, is uh, an, another thing you can say about it. Uh, the, it makes perfect sense that uh, U.S. Uh, economic policy is almost destined to, uh, to be supportive of the wealthiest in the country not because they're making underhanded contributions, not because uh, their lobbyists are the strongest lobbyists, but because they represent such a large segment of the economy. So if you're making a decision about what's best for the economy, you are ipso facto, you are, as a matter of equivalence, also making a decision about what's best for uh, the small percentage of the population. Uh, conversely, the argument will turn on uh, should government decisions be made uh, based upon what's best, always what's best for the economy, or should uh, government decisions be based uh, uh, on uh, social justice and uh, economic justice and, and uh, 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 support for uh, the uh, growing segment of, uh, of our economy that are having a tough time. Uh, the, the argument will rage on and it will only become more intense. Uh, the, this is not a moral argument and it's not a political argument even though it has been presented in the press that way. It's an economic argument. Uh, is the society uh, uh, a more stable, more productive, and overall healthier, healthier society from, from the point of view of economic uh, sustainability uh, if there is a flattening of the wealth curve, a flattening of the, uh, of the, uh, of the curve that, that is currently steepening with fewer and fewer people uh, doing well and more and more people uh, doing less well. If there's a flattening of the curve, is that a more sustainable economy? Is that a, is the, is that a, uh, a, a better and more stable uh, total closed universe? So it's, it's, it's quite fascinating and the argument will simply become more and more intense. You can see this same argument spill to the healthcare debate. Um, the healthcare debate becomes a moral issue very quickly because no one wants to see uh, a sick person denied care. So it becomes a moral issue uh, instantaneously. But underlying it is an economic issue and that is uh, does the society grant to its citizens as a matter of right uh, health care uh, and all of the costs attendant uh, with that commitment, with that right? Or does the society see healthcare as a product and as a market which people can participate or not participate in, buy into or not buy into as they choose? Uh, the, uh, the argument relates right back to dollars of revenue that are available to the government to spend and how the government chooses to spend it. Uh, uh, they, the two are linked literally as the left hip is linked to the right hip. They are the two cornerstones of economic, uh, uh, of, of, of economic analysis in the country at the present time. Uh, the health debate appears to be about health. It 
which it is on its surface, but it's really about money. Uh, the, the health industries and the health providers as a global cost are almost 19% of our GDP, of our gross domestic product. So, can't talk about one without the other. Uh, central in Washington debate this week and guaranteed to be central in the weeks to come. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this. This is David Kroll signing off for Money Matters. Have a great week. Thank you.